Hello there, we've been asked by a customer if they can use Inkscape for sublimation printing and the answer is I don't know. So let's open up Inkscape and give it a go. So there we go. Whilst it's opening I would say I tried this earlier on Inkscape 1.1 and it was a nightmare. So I've uploaded uh, or downloaded 1.3 and let's have a go from here. So here we go, you get this little interface and we want a new document. You may be able to turn that interface off, I don't know. And there's our portrait size document. Now we're doing this for mugs. So the first thing that we would do is to create a mug template and split this document into three. The height of a mug is roughly 10 centimeters. So if you come down here and there's a hundred millimeter or 10 centimeters, down to 200 is 100 is again 200 millimeters down but that gives you three sections of approximately 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters each so let's get on and see if we can make this work we're going to import some images and it's going to be very rough and ready the idea is a principle of it so go to your import now I'm would say that I have tried this before and I had to go back and resize the images at eight centimeters high because I hadn't worked out how to get effective control. But let's take it as it goes and see what we get. You'll see what I mean. It just comes in like that. So if your image is too big, it, it's difficult to make it smaller. So as I say, I've resized these at eight centimeters. 18 mil. So there's a penguin image. Um, import. A red raccoon or a red something. There we go. And you know, just to be f for a bit of fun or to be a bit fussy, import and we've got a big cat image. Now I've already set this, I, I like it smooth, optimised quality and as you can see other settings here. So here we go and there's our big cat. So let's just rearrange these and see what can be done. And you can use guides to make things look pretty good. There you go. Let's get the height the same. Get the margin roughly the same. And we can overlap that a bit. Yeah, and let's just bob a bit of text on. Um, a day at Chester Zoo means nothing, but it's something. Now, I have no idea how we control text here. I dare say we can make it bigger but I'm just going to cheat I suppose we could just fire that over there and do a bit there we could drop that down a little bit I don't know where the text control box is, but the objective is not to show you how to use the program, it's to show you the principles. So there we go, we've got that done. All we're going to do now is print that out. So file, print, 
and we select our Epson printer. Now I had a nightmare in version 1.1 in that it wouldn't give me the preferences box and for Epson. What I got was their own, but there you go, we've got the right box. So, all we're going to want to do is paper type. Change that to matte coated. Epson matte will do. Standard, highest quality on the quality setting. Now, I'm going to use the mirror image here because you have to mirror image when you sublimate. But there we go, that's set for basic sublimation. Now, if it's the first time you're doing it, come back to main and see if I can remember how to do this. Add remove presets. Do I just click that button and do I just call it basic subly settings and give it a quick save and there you go every time you go in if you click that save we've saved it and closed it can I just show you what I mean by that let's take away mirror, mirror image and let's just go in here and change this to plain paper now when you go in this is a speed dial kind of a thing so you go in, you want to print, you want to get on and you can't remember what you're doing, just hit that thing and it'll sort it out for you. What you've done is you created a sublimation preset. So Epson map, high quality, more options and it's all automatically selected mirror image. So there you go, we're okay with that. So you won't see the image change what you will see is the image change on the print. So let's hit the print. And that's exactly how you would do it. Now, I don't know the degree that Inkscape handles colors. That is something we're gonna to have to figure out as we go. But I must be honest, I like the look, and I like the simplicity of what's going on here. So, that's really that. There's one other thing I want to show you. If you don't want to mirror the image on the print driver, you can. And bear with me, I've not used this software. So we're here, let's go to, there, flip. So that effectively mirrors it there and how you tell is the text. But let's unflip it. And et voila, bit of French there, that's it. So I hope that helps. And I can't stress enough, we're learning this as we go also. So thank you.